So let's explore the idea of making skill checks in Dungeons and Dragons. The idea is your character is proficient in some aspect, maybe stealth, lock picking, history, spellcraft, and augmented by their character class and ability scores. Generally speaking, when you want to do something in D&D outside of combat, the dungeon master behind the DM screen will have a difficulty level. You want to pick that lock. You want to smash down that door. You want to search for secret passages. There's going to be a difficulty level if it exists, and a player will roll a d20, add up any modifiers, and report that number to the DM. And the DM will say success or failure, or they will reveal information depending on if it's passed. And uh, this system is interesting because it allows for this idea of progression as your character levels up and they become more proficient, not only in combat, but also in just the, the, the skills, the natural abilities, the secondary abilities of that character class. It also um, allows the DM to facilitate, it allows the DM to facilitate this progress without having to directly go back and forth with the player. That's not to say role-playing doesn't exist. Um, many times, as a DM, you have to know when to allow a skill check, a role, or when, hey, it's a role-playing game, let's, let's play it out. So we want to get some information from the local bard. We're at the end, we kind of want to know what's going on. Are goblins really attacking? Is it something a little bit more sinister? What's happened to the caravan? Uh, someone saw an owlbear out in the woods. Is a druid angry? You know, a lot of, a lot of competing rumors. It would be easy to say, well, I want to find out everything from the bard. I'll make a lore check. I rolled an 18 plus 12. Tell me everything, DM. Like, you, you could do that. But generally speaking, in that case, I prefer to have a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm the bard. Okay, what do you want to know? Did you tip me a couple of silver pieces? Did you tip me a couple of gold pieces? Um, did you compliment my song? It's, it's nice to have the back and forth. So there are times as a DM to pull that narrative out where you don't have to use a skill check. And then other times it's helpful because it, it does help determine not just pass or fail, but modify based on difficulty. So what about the times? And this is, these are just ideas for your D and D toolkit. What about those times in making skill checks where it's, it's an auto pass. Um, we used to see in other editions or some players, you'll hear them say, I just take a 20. Right? I just make a t I take a 20 on there, so 20 plus my ability, or I auto-pass. I will allow potentially auto-passes. Uh, it, it's rare. If the player is nothing but time. So if you took that chest from the dungeon and you suspect it's trapped, and in my DM notes it is trapped, it's got a you know, DC 20, it's kind of difficult. If you take it back to the inn and the rogue, with the assistance of the wizard, or, or maybe just the rogue, says, you know, look, I'm going to spend a day checking this thing out, experimenting with it, analyzing it, then if you're spending a day and you reasonably can without interruption, because we're back at the end, maybe you paid the bard off, maybe you didn't, then that's okay. You don't have to roll. You can make it happen. But even times where success is guaranteed, if it's happening real time, I still want my players to roll for, for two reasons. I never really want them to know the difficulty check of a particular test simply because if I'm playing the challenge rating system and if the game is somewhat balanced for character level, you know, levels, this adventure playable for levels three to six. If you have an idea of that and you know the, the difficulty level is you average out, you know, 10 risk versus reward, then, you know, that trap, uh, I'm pretty sure I discovered it or I didn't discover it, or there's no trap there, success or pass, yes or no. So I really don't want you to try and gauge the difficulty level. So I don't like auto passes. I say, roll it. And even if you're like, look, I, I rolled a, a 12 plus my score, I pass. That's okay. I want you to roll it. Even if you know you're automatically going to pass. You could take that 20, you still roll it. But I also like the idea of if you're not under duress, critical failures, because this is a chance for me as a DM uh, this is a chance for me as a DM to pull in some role-playing aspects. And, and critical failure doesn't have to be um, punishing the character. It can open up opportunities. So you're looking for a secret door. And 
you're going to find it because your skill is so crazy. Like even before you take that 20, you've got like, you know, uh, a plus 17 modifier. You still roll because a one is always a failure. Things can always happen. You're in a dungeon. It's torchlight or it's mage light or it's a light spell. Things are going on. The warrior's on guard. The rogue is checking things out. You know, you're checking things out. If you fail, even if there's no consequences, like a trap blows up in your face, I could still say, well, you're looking for a secret door and uh, it opens because you find it because technically you'd still succeed. You'd beat the, the difficulty on your base score alone before you roll, but you roll that one. So as it opens, something grinds. You know, the the mechanism hasn't been used in, who knows, hundreds of years. It's rusted. It's corroded. As this door opens, the sound, the grinding sound is so loud. Everyone in the entire dungeon, it's reverberating 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 50 seconds. Things are finally quiet. And then you hear a massive roar in the distance. Like, now I just made all that up. I made that up. It's not even a dragon in the adventure. The players don't know that. Like, but just, just as a chance for critical failure to interject that in, um, that's the opportunity I like as the DM. To always have the players roll. 